Hello, welcome back to Arknight's Babel. Um, I'm just gonna jump right into reading more of it. Um, if you watched the last video, you know that I'm recording all these really fast, so I need to be able to record them before I run out of time. So, let's get to it. Eight years ago, summer, 1086. <clears throat> Residential district, the nomadic city of Kazdel, Kazdel. Remember the promise we made at the beginning of the lesson? Good. Keep your voice low when answering, and don't tell anyone about the classes. Ray Tonka <clears throat> has been teaching you about history, about our history, for the past few months. As for myself, I've been struggling to decide what to teach you in our last lesson. Mathematics, language, agriculture, weapon making. What I've come to realize is that whatever I teach you, what whatever I teach you won't truly change our lives. We've lived silently in, despa in despair for too long. What the fuck? The war 18 years ago never ended. The ghosts of Lathanian's <clears throat> fleet, the ghosts of Lathanian's fleet continue to haunt those who experienced that war. Many died in despair, drowned in the fear of war, and being consumed <clears throat> by the black rocks that grew from their bodies, the oropathy. But our instincts drove us to seek a way to overcome despair. Cool. Some declared war on despair, on the outsiders <clears throat> who oppressed us, but they all fell short in the face of cruel reality. Oh, it's good luck. Came to see the contracts. I've never seen a more motivated mercenary than you. Are you trying to buy a mansion in Colombia or something? One should feel lucky just to be alive for so long. In that sense, I suppose your name is well deserved. I heard a bunch of jobs came in lately. Anything good? There are eyes on and in the city now. Things didn't turn out too well for the last few who took these jobs. It's Babel stuff. Are you sure you want to take part in that mess? Yeah, I trust my luck. Have it your way. There's a teacher in town who's been saying good things about Babel's outsiders. Someone is willing to pay to shut him up for good. Will do. Poor dude. I look forward to your surprises. Hope your luck t doesn't run out today. Thematic City of Kazdel, Kazdel. It's been a while since good luck came back. The city has changed a lot. People come and go. He is familiar with the words Babel and Military Commission. There are always people fighting over things that he just doesn't understand. He does not... <clears throat> He doesn't understand why the Sarcasts feel the need to fight one another. He takes out the photo of its a target, a well mannered a mild mannered young man. The triangle marking on his sleeve seems familiar. A teacher spreading praise about Babel's outsiders, inciting opposition against the military commission. Sorry, your luck just ran out today. Should be around here. Wait, this place? It's his son been away for a long time, but not long enough to forget his home. Oda's home. Oda, you should not have gotten involved. He abandoned his son, didn't he? We've gotten used to despair from one defeat after another at the hands of powers beyond our ability to resist. But we need to convince ourselves that our despair was not self-inflicted, that it stemmed from an obvious source of our in our lives. That is what Babel has become for most people in these day and age. It was Babel who brought the enemies. It was Babel's medicines that worsened our oropathy. It was Babel's education that sapped our will to resist. It was Babel who deluded the Sar King of Sarkaz and tricked us into giving up on collecting the blood debt from the outsiders. B Babel is the source of all of our despair. I see some of you nodding. No doubt you've heard the same from your parents. In desperate times, people often mistake hearsay for the truth. But is it the truth, though? Were our lives better without outsiders in Kazdel? Don't take anything at face value. See, think, and find your own answer. Yes, it's hard to leave Kazdel. The land outside is full of danger. Even making it to the border of the country is no small feat. But I'll still leave this place. I'll go to Lithania. To Lithanian. 
<clears throat> Colombia, Kashmir's, to anywhere that I might may find a way to change things. Then I'll come back and teach you, and all the children of Sarkaz. What will happen to Babel, you ask? The future of Babel. It's the sun, yeah. Hide yourselves. Don't make a sound. Hello, are you looking for someone? Oh, it's Ascalon. Sorry, I got the wrong door. Do you need help? I'm familiar with the area. He smiles. There's no panic in his eyes. Ascalon scans the sparsely furnished room and understands. Pensive child. Do you live here on your own? Yeah. My name is Ascalon. I'm from Babel. Hmm? Thank you for sheltering him, but you must leave. Be careful. These are troubled times. You hear her? Someone knows you're here. You need to go. Not just the military commission, but also the mercenaries who've been bringing trouble to our doorsteps. I know. I'm very grateful to you for lending us your house to serve as classroom. The children, I'll take them home. Don't worry, you can continue your classes in a few days, once the storm has passed. There will be no need. As I've said before, I'm ready to leave. I've already spent too much time here because I wanted to see the lessons through the end. Through to the end. There are many places that I still need to see. Alright. Oh, don't forget the potatoes. They're from the children and me. It's not much, but they will serve as a few meals on the road. Thank you so much. All of you. I should be the one thanking you. I learned a lot from you. For the past few years, Kazil has grown faster than its education and public thinking can keep up. I fear that our powers will be our own destruction if we do, <clears throat> do not change the present situation. The conflicts we see in Kazdel now are a good example. This is not how the Sarkaz should be. I've yet to find a way to <clears throat> change all these, but I know that the answer does not lie within Kazdel. Goodbye, Oda. Goodbye. May your journey be safe and smooth. And then he's dead. Oda watches as the teacher disappears around the corner, but does not go in. He does not remember when it started, but... He has had the habit <clears throat> of sitting by the door, waiting for a familiar someone to return. Wind stirs the dust from the streets, and the dust stirs up his tears. There's not even a shadow. He gently closes the door. <sighs> Bro, go see your child, Oda. Good luck sees the target leave the house. Then he sees a familiar figure that he has not seen in a long time. His blade feels heavy. He cannot move. Oda, I'm sorry, I didn't know. I'm a lousy dad, but... He tightens his grip on the knife's hilt. He knows only one way to give Oda a better future. Ascalon just killed him. Unless he just did it. Another one. A mist shrouds a corpse in the corner of the street, erasing all the traces of its existence. The passing of a life in Kazdel is akin to a speck of dust falling to the ground unheard, unceremonious, and unnoticed. His luck has run out. How long do you plan on hiding here, Manfred? <clears throat> or are you planning to stab me in the back now, too? Oh, it's Manfred as an adult! Crazy. Another mercenary. How many have you killed? Didn't see the point of keep count keeping count. You could kill one, two, a hundred even, but can you kill every single mercenary who accepts the contract? They just want to remind us that we've been complacent with the status quo for far too long. Using the lives of Babel's members is a reminder to remind whom. He made a promise to Her Highness. Is this what he calls protection for Babel? All I see are crackdowns on Babel and mercenaries running wild. There are some things that should not be said out loud. Especially not by you, Ascalon. If you don't like it, arrest me. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Let's see if you've improved at all under this tutelage. <laughs> Wang! <laughs> the general has taught me that there are more important things than violence. 
And by the looks of things, the mercenaries aren't the only ruthless cutthroats around here. Stop dodging if you dare. I'll prove to their highnesses that I can beat you. Too slow, Manfred. Wait. Ah! <laughs> You're dead. Again. Ah. Get up. Don't need you to tell me. Put work, Manfred. And Ascalon, stop going for his head all the time. This is the most effective way. It's his own fault for getting hit. If he can't dodge it, he has to learn to take it. You're right, Ascalon, but why did you stop? We didn't tell you to. I, I can't take it. Your Highness, it's not over yet. <laughs> huh, I hit. Your Highness, I hit. Did you now? Uh oh. Let me down, Ascalon. Don't hurt him, Ascalon. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Uh, that's funny. Manfred's long limbs flail helplessly in the air while his torso is tied to a wooden stake. <laughs> oh my god, that's great. Uh, how did you do it so fast? Got my inspiration from her, the way her highness sews. Manfred wriggles to break free, but the more he squirms, the tighter the ropes hug him. He cannot understand how Ascalon can be so strong and fast when she looks so thin and frail. Let me down! Look, I won again! <laughs> Reads her weapon high and grins gloriously at the twin sovereigns. Ascalon has gotten a lot more cheerful. What are you thinking? They're different from the other Sarcast children. We can change them, but how can we reach all the children of Kazdel? Give me time. Babel can do it. Time is a luxury. I know. But education is... <clears throat> Not something that can be rushed. What we're doing is leaving hope for the next generation. The flame of hope will never go out as long as the single teacher in Kazdel, as long as a single teacher in Kazdel remains to, willing to share with these children the vision of a beautiful future. Teresa casts her eyes <clears throat> towards the two children, full of hope for the future. Well, are you going to admit defeat or not? No, let me down! We're not done! I'll let you down when you admit defeat. No way! I'll mind you, Manfred. Thank you, your highness. W w why am I flying? Your, your highness! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, that will do. Teresa, let him down. <laughs> oh shit, right, they're fighting. You've improved, but Teresa hasn't taught you everything he knows. You're always the fast learned learner. But ever since you left the general, you've been nothing but unadjusted and lost. He's disappointed in your departure, by the way. I may not be as good with words as you are, but at least I don't just ignore the insults against Her Highness Teresa. Do you really know why Her Highness is so dedicated to Babel's ideals? Do you really know why the general hasn't openly denounced the attacks on Babel? You should have talked to him, rather than turning your back on him. I turned my back? You're the ones who turn their backs on Her Highness and the voices of so many. It's Teresa <clears throat> who, sorry, who has turned a blind eye to the mercenaries' acts of violence and the damage they've caused Babel. This much I know. The General has allowed it precisely because he can't ignore the voices of the majority. The fate of Sarkaz is doomed to fall into the abyss. What's wrong with using some more effective means to prevent it? So that's what you truly think. It's what most of us in Kazdel think. It's not that I don't trust Her Highness. Anyone can promise a brighter future. But we can't ignore the reality before it. Isn't it crueler to use violence to force a child to shake hands and make peace with the murderer who just killed his father? Say whatever you want. I'll keep my hands off the military commission. But if you try to act through the mercenaries, then my job is simple. No more mercenaries, no more problems. Ascalon! If you have the time, go visit Her Highness. I've never seen her so tired. A puff of mist is the only sign that she left. She of her. Only sign that she was ever there. Manfred <laughs> looks down and wipes away the blood slowly seeping out of his chest. He sighs and turns into the empty street, only to spot the deceased mercenary's effects. Someday we will all understand. 
It was never Her Highness, or the General who made the choice. Who's there? He hesitates before the door. It has been a busy day at this old ramshackle house, from the teacher to the multiple visitors. Who could it be outside the door? Has Father finally returned? And if so, what should he say? He has learned so much from the teacher that he wants to share with his father, whose visits back home have become less and less frequent. He takes a deep breath, collects his mind, puts on a calm face, and opens the door. Hello? Hello? Good evening. You're, you're, uh, can I help you, sir? Do you know who I am? No, sir, but I know the uniform of the military commission. Just a routine inspection. Do you recognize these items? This is my father's! There's been a disturbance in the city, and I'm afraid your father... I'm so sorry. Where did you find them? Was there... There was nothing else left at the scene. I'm sorry. What's your name? Oda. If you need any help, no. No, I'm very grateful you brought these back. It's been a long time since I last saw him. This is enough. I don't have to wait anymore. He's not coming back. Do you have family or friends you can count on? I can take care of myself. Besides, we see these things like this all day. Every day in the city. I'm sorry I gush, sir. I just feel like I know you somehow. I'm sure you're busy. I... Oh, right! Because he took Oda to go look for his dad. I won't keep you any longer. My condolences. I forgot about that. The door closes. Manfred can hear the sound of sobbing coming from behind the door. But he doesn't feel sorrow. Not anymore. Oda's right. He's seen this too many times. Yet he remembers this is not what the city was meant to be. Oh shit. Did I just... Oh no, okay. I don't know why my screen just went black, but it did. Permission to attack granted. Okay. What's that? Okay, nothing. Uh, I'm assuming they're gonna come from here first. Forwards. Put in there. Keep your distance, yeah, or you okay. risk getting caught up in the fighting. Yes, ma'am. You Can there. your eyes keep up? Okay, I think I put her there then. Speeding up. You are going. There. How soon do you want them gone? Oh, uh, she's going down next. Um, what? Accelerates when moving. First attacks. <clears throat> first attack after being blocked deals extra arch damage based on movement speed. <laughs> Losing sight. All right, I, I'm up. Still mulling think conviction will throw you off nice. pace. Good job, Doug and Wrecker. I mean... That's it. That. Holy fuck, he just took a lot of damage. Yep. Electric charge! It's game over for you. Shooting star! That's what they should get yourself killed, dummy! Still mulling things over, Dr. Perfect. Still mulling conviction will throw you <laughs> off pace. <Okay>. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's one way to do it, I guess. Come on! Let's pick up the pace! Mm. Wow. On standby. Just insta kills her. You want my opinion? Still mulling things, emotion is meaningless here. <laughs> oh, that choke point really got them fucked up. Nice, Degenwrecker. 
but I'm Attic City of Kazdal. Kazdal. Let me through. This area is off limits. What happened? Are you with Babel? N no. Then it's none of your business. The wall of royal court soldiers prevents Odo from passing. But he sees several familiar crying faces in the scattered rings crowd. Those students. Hmm. I think I can take this alley here. Excuse me, do you know what happened? Someone beat another guy to death. He's dead too. Are you trying to join the racket? Babel again. What is her highness thinking? Shut your trap. You owe everything you eat, everything you wear, and the roof above your head to her highness. Shh. Well, it's simple enough, all right. A teacher beat the father of his student to death. A teacher? How could... All the man did was gold him a little. And it was the teacher who was telling the kids all sorts of awful things. That's not true. You're a babble shill too? Kids these days. Hey, what are you doing? Oda squeezes through the crowd to see the familiar faces lying on the ground. He finally finds the source of the commotion, the teacher laying in a cloud of dust. Teacher, what's going on? I, I didn't mean to hurt his father. Hang in there. I'll find a doctor. No, over there. Him. Oda looks in the direction that the, that the dying man is pointing and sees an injured child crying by the lifeless body of his father. Oda runs through the burning streets, carrying the injured child in his arms, and pieces together the whole picture from what he sees and hears. It began with an agitated teacher accidentally killing an agitated father before he was set upon by the angry crowd and fell in the dust on the streets. The turmoil dragged everyone in, civilians, Babel, mercenaries, even the military commission. Like a chain reaction, clouds of dust were stirred up in various corners of the city. It wasn't until artillery from an unknown source blasted through a wall of Babel's office, office building that the Royal Corps troops finally quelled the riot. It began with an accident and ended with a shell that caused more damage to Babel than anything in the past 18 years since the end of the war. The kid is hurt and needs a doctor. Don't make me do this the hard way. Whose side are you on? Babel? The military commission? Neither. I just wanted to get him to a doctor. Now get out of my way. My dad. It's too late for him. I'm sorry. Go. But don't trust outsiders so easily. Sark has not in this chaos. Thank you. Oda can feel the child's breathing grow weaker as he continues on his way. Running through the streets, he seems to feel someone brush past his shoulder, but sees no one. Was I imagining things? Stop right there. Not one step closer. There are patients inside. This kid needs medical attention now. But, oh, I didn't think there was anyone still willing to bring patients here. Alright, I'll take it from here. I'll give. I'll try to give you some extra medicine before we leave. Leave? Our Highness made the decision, but we all know what's happening. We're not welcoming Kazdil anymore. Where are you going? Outside the city? Aren't you afraid of the dangers and the wastes? Yes, I am. But if the city no longer welcomes us, then we respect its choice. I want to join Babel. I can help care for the patients or protect you. Is this the one who started the whole mess? Will he live? Don't think so. Lost too much blood. Ugh, then what are we going to even do here? What are we even doing here? Just follow the general's orders and don't ask questions. Who would have thought <clears throat> something so minor would lead to Her Their Highness's statement? Ugh, is he trying to talk to us? There's nobody else around. Probably just seeing things before he dies. No banshee would sing an elegy for such a sinner. It's dangerous. Go. They can't see me. My arts hide my presence. Who are you? A student. I came from far away, following in the footsteps of my mother, to find answers in this wandering city and her two rulers. Did you find? I'm afraid the city doesn't have the answers ready yet, but I found you. The ideas that you advocated were very interesting. I was with you when you taught those children in that basement. 
learning about the city in Babel. Of course, no one expect noticed except Ascalon. The boy he, uh, has been brought to Babel where his injuries will be treated. Do you regret your end? No, the boy defended me. He understood what I tried to change. I'm sorry about his father. I sympathize. It was not your intention to cause this tragedy, but fate has played a cruel joke on you. I hear crying. It is your elegy, calling your fading soul to the other side. Fear not, hesitate not. A myriad souls welcome you with open arms. Let my song take you beyond. Thank you. The young banshee's song soothes the mind of the dying man. The gentle song echoes through the crowded streets of the city. Banshees respond to the song of their young kin, adding their voices to the harmony. It is an elegy that commemorates the passing of an ordinary sarcasm. We were talking about the future of Babel in the lesson, but we didn't get to the end. What were you going to say? I believe that Babel will die someday. I hope I'm wrong. A song. Another sarcast has passed on the, the turmoil. There's no longer any place for Babel here. I will lead them and leave the city. Teresa, we love you. All of us. I know. But Babel has no choice. But if you leave, my people have made their choice. Neither I nor Theresis can change it. We cannot abandon hope, but the best course of action right now is to avoid a conflict. Hatred will swallow us like a flood. You've always known, Teresa, our hero, our king. Gentle requests and gradual changes will not sway the minds of the Sarkaz drawn here by Kazdel's rise. Laka Merlin, I... <clears throat> Perhaps what I say will disappoint, even hurt you, Teresa. Rimbilitin, Sargon, even Columbia, you have opened their doors and allowed the Sarkaz to negotiate with some as equals. Terra has seen more technological progress in 50 years than it has for over a millennia. But we were too slow. Despite the incredible changes you've brought to Kazdel, they haven't been enough to bear the fruits of true transformation. Even if I, too, believe that the fruits of spring are near. Is this the stance of the Banshee Court, Lacromaline? Lacromaline? I'm just a mother who came to see her boy off, Teresa. I respect his choice, and there will come a day when he will speak. Oh shit, that kid looked just like her. Red eyes and like the hair color. Huh, and there will come a day when he will speak for our royal court. That day is not today. I know you love him. You haven't fought allowed yourself to age since he was born. If an ill, it was a miracle to me, and to all banshees. The day he was born, I became loath to age with time. I have preserved my appearance at the peak of my beauty. I wish to remain eternal in his memory. My life is finite, of course. It's only the facade that never changes. I know what your highness is thinking. You never expected your dream to come true in this generation. You see yourself as the soil, and it's not the soil's <clears throat> and it's not the soil's due to witness the flowers bloom. Even if the two of you have to give everything to nourish the soil. Humor my little self-indulgence, your highness. Until he finds the answer he is seeking, allow him to travel between the two of you, to learn from both of you. He'll be the first sprout to emerge from the soil. Bring Ephanil. Take care of him. Protect him in my place. I will, Lacrimaline, my friend. Thank you. No matter where you go, no matter what fate awaits either of you, the Banshee Court will sing both your elegies and announce to all, This is my promise. It is the most ancient and powerful of witchcrafts. My final parting gift to you. Akura Malin, will we meet again? I hope so. Until next time then, I look forward to the day that I can hear you sing in the midst of the Kenvalis. Farewell, your highness. I'm afraid I must stay here and go no further. Ifinil, <clears throat> Ifinil will be part of your procession, after all, and I'm not ready to say goodbye to him yet.
Two days later. How long do you plan on standing there? You came a little too early. If it's Teresa you're looking for. I didn't think you would have the courage to come to me, Ascalon. Why? Do you mean why wouldn't you have the courage to see me, or why banished battle? You've seen Manfred? Yes. Did you do it? Not all the way. Good. Now, remove yourself before you say something childish and naive. Not even Teresa can would agree with you. Or you could choose to stay. You don't have to explain yourself, after all. You never formally joined Babel. Her Highness needs someone to protect her. She's more powerful than you think. And I agree with you even less. <clears throat> Wait, what? And I agree with you even less, Master. <laughs> I suppose I should take that as a no. You and Manfred are my best students. Yet, both of you have fatal flaws. Your talents in combat are peerless. But... What do you truly believe? Your Highness, impatience. I said that you truly believe in. Not me, nor Teresa. You still <clears throat> don't know what you seek, do you? To protect? That's just empty. Self-deceptive de self sentimentality. When you're unsure of your path, you merely project your motivations onto vague ideals. I I've thought about it carefully. Perhaps. Then follow Teresa and fo protect her. But don't blindly adopt her ways. Think for yourself. Manfred found his answers long before you did. The next time we see each other... Never mind. Go, Ascalon. There is nothing else for us to talk about now. Ascalon falls to one knee, and then turns to a mist that closes around Teresa's. The mist trembles and disperses, leaving behind only a stone knife in Teresa's hand. He recalls the day that he snatched the blade from the child in the catastrophe. You were too cold to her, Teresa's. <clears throat> this is... It's a time of parting. You could have shared your mind with her. She's never been adept at expressing emotion. As her teacher, you're better than me at reaching the teenager side of her. <laughs> Do you really have no faith in her? She's welcome back at any time. In her choice. Oh. She's welcome back at any time. Manfred <clears throat> remains too complacent in his training. He needs someone to challenge him. A goal to work towards. I'll tell her. I wish you would come back too. I know. If we cannot resolve a minor conflict like this, the next one could escalate into a full-fledged civil war. If it comes to that, all we have dreamed of for a century will be for naught. If the day comes and if I have to, I'll kill you. Babel is ready. We will leave with those who are willing to follow. You've always kept them close. Yes, because they need me. I need you too. Kazdil needs its king. Teresa. <sighs> Our people have made their choice. The best of course of action, for now at least, is for Babel to back down. I will continue to call the nourishing rain upon Kazdil, change the city's circumstances, and wait for hatred to subside. But if you become the greatest threat to the <clears throat> searching dreamers in this long and painstaking process, I'll destroy you. So be it. Mercenaries and royal court soldiers line the streets, holding back the restless crowd. It was the King of Sarkaz who brought food and shelter. It was also the King of Sarkaz who allowed the oppression and hatred to fester. The Babel procession stretches as far as the eye can see, past the barricades formed by lines of royal court soldiers. Past the disdainful crowd. Theresis walks towards the crowd and stands with them. He's left Theresa's side for the first time in two centuries. We all know what we must face. I hope this will not be the last time we stand together. Will that day be far? Not too far. Theresa joins the silent procession. Their farewell to the city is soundless. Their path is one of hope. Then something occurs. Enough to silence the restless onlookers and momentarily halt the procession. The cursing and crying cease. Every eye turns to a single, poignant scene. A mercenary steps out of the line to embrace his best friend in the procession. No one can hear the whispers exchanged between the two friends by the ruins of Babel. But all are willing to wait 
and give them their moment of farewell. Farewell between the people and their city, and between two peoples of the same blood. A young Sarkaz, who has lost everyone he holds dear, walks in the procession without regret. He remembers walking the same path, leaving the city in search of his parents with his older companion many years ago. Dad, I believe that there has to be another way than war. Mom, I know you believed in Babel because you hoped for a different way to live. Goodbye, Mom. Dad. Goodbye, home. For Teresa's eyes only. I have heard of what happened in Kazdel, and share your sense of loss. The city holds special meaning to us all. But Babel need not adri <clears throat> drift on the wastelands, for I have located the ship I previously mentioned in Rimbilitan. The excavation went smoothly, and the ship's basic functions have been restored after two years of work. It will carry the hopes of Babel in the future. Please wait for me, Teresa. P.S. I did find it on the ship. A legacy that could bring upheaval to this land. Given its importance, <clears throat> given its importance, I feel it is crucial to discuss this matter with you in person. With hope. Cults it. Rhodes Island! That's so cool! We may have achieved a perfect victory, but we still can't let our guard down. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. I'm loving this story, dude. I didn't know the story of what happened before Rhodes Island became a thing. So it's really cool to hear the story of how it started. And I'm having tons of fun with this. Um, that's the end of this video. So if you like it, like and subscribe. Um, that was intense. That was very sad and it was sad. I don't know. I felt like I wanted to cry at some parts, but I wanted to finish reading it because I wanted to see what happened next. It's cool to hear that Babel was the start of Rhodes Island. And while this is going on, yeah, while this is going on, Kelsa is looking for the ship that becomes Rhodes Island. And they found it on board, so I don't know what that means, but we'll find out in the next one, I guess. Um, but like I said, if you like this video, like and subscribe. I love having you guys around. Um, if you want to talk to me more, join the Discord. I'm in there a lot more often than the comments, unfortunately. Just don't have a lot of time lately, and it's easier to open up Discord. If you want to support this channel, buy me a coffee. I'd really appreciate it. The link for my Ko-Fi will be in the description. Um, other than that, though, you better have a good night, and bye bye